What's going on guys? My name is Hussein and welcome to another episode of Wiresharking Them All where we basically pick up protocol and wire shark it and go through all the packets and go through all the protocol details and just discuss all the efficiencies slash inefficiencies and just discuss the expense of executing or using that protocol. Today's protocol is SSH or secure shell. How about we jump into it? My Wireshark listening is ready and I have a wire uh, I have an SSH server running on my Raspberry Pi and I'm about to do SSH by a uh, Raspberry Pi 1.home.local and hit enter. The first thing I'm going to be asked is for the password, but I'm not gonna put the password yet. Let's see what happened so far. Ooh, that is a lot of stuff. So let's go through them one by one. So the first three beautiful thing we discussed many times in this channel, SIN, SIN ACK, ACK, that's the establishment of the wire, the TCP socket, the TCP connection. So SIN, SIN ACK, and ACK. And the first thing the client sends right after establishing the connection is client protocol i am support i am version 8.1 open ssh ssh 2.0 is it and the wireshark is very nicely dissecting the protocol for us unfortunately we'll not be able to actually see the decrypted traffic because uh, we can't do this because ssh doesn't use tls it uses its own encryption algorithm but we'll be able to go through the handshake and stuff like that. So that will be enough, I think. So we're using SSH version 2. And immediately after that, the server acknowledges that packet. That way, we received your client protocol. And now the server replies back and says, Oh, you're actually newer than me. I'm 7.9, Raspberryan. But I do support this as H2, 2.0. And here is it. Right, so the server responds back with the with its own version, right? But I believe we can compact this with other requests. But I'm, I might be wrong. Let's, let's go on. Let's continue. So the client acknowledges that server version, right? Now, though both the clients know the version, and this is very critical to pick the algorithms and and versions of the key exchange and 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 the key generation and ciphers so the client now sends a client key exchange initialization and this is not is this just to tell the server hey server i support all this key exchange algorithms I support Curve, I support this version of Curve, uh, I support this uh, uh, symmetric key algorithm. Most of them, are, if you know this, all of them are elliptic curve, Diffie-Hellman, right? So it's a, it lists all of that stuff for you. It lists all this uh, symmetric key algorithms as well and, and pretty much everything, right? And the server replies back, not by what actually it picked, right? So, so for example, look at this, right? It says, okay, I support ChaCha, which is the symmetric uh, encryption algorithm. I support the uh, elliptic curve, pretty much all of that stuff, the key exchange, right? So it just tells you, hey, I, am, I want to exchange a key, and here's what I support. The server replies back with its own version of what is supported, but it doesn't tell you, hey, let's, ch let's unlike TLS, it doesn't tell you, hey, let's pick this. No. It doesn't do that, which is fascinating. And I was surprised a little bit. So support A, support RSA, support all that stuff, right? All the, whatever is supported, just like literally list them all here. Pretty neat. So just like that, we have what? One, two, three, four. Four requests and responses. So two requests, two responses. So what? Two round trips so far. The next thing, and we still don't have a key, right? We don't have a key. This is just exchanging information so far. That's what I meant. I was like, why don't you just tell me? 
in the in the in the initial version, just tell me the key exchange. I these could have been merged. It's not a big deal because you we don't do an SSH connection every single minute, right? It's just something you do. You take the hit once and that's it, right? So I think it's it's okay if it's a little bit chatty. And uh, this is the interesting part. Client says Diffie Hellman key exchange in it. Let's do a Diffie Hellman key exchange. We talked about Diffie Hellman, guys. Check out the video right here. The Diffie Hellman key exchange is not okay. I'm gonna build my part of the Diffie Hellman key exchange using these parameters, right? This is this is the key parameters and all that stuff, right? And uh, I'm using this stuff, I'm using the, this is the version, this is the key exchange algorithm, right? It doesn't even tell you which one I picked. Why? Because it is inferred in the actual software in SSH client and open SSH, which is the server side. They just know somehow magically. And I was like, what? Yeah, it's actually a secure concept if you think about it, right? Because someone is sniffing in the middle, if they try to guess, they can't because you don't even tell them what what did I use. You just say, yeah, that's what I'm, this is, this is the key exchange algorithm. This is the parameters, go figure. Right, it is. By the way, it's uh, it is a curve, uh, uh, which is the elliptic curve uh, Diffie-Hellman. So that's the algorithm used. But on the server side, it just responds back, says, "Okay, this is the reply. Uh, this is the key exchange. We uh, it's an elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange, and then this is the public part of stuff and uh, returning that full portion of the key." And now both of them now have the full key, right? Because the client will have the portion of the key and this thing is not encrypted. The client, the server will take the parameters from the client, complete it from the server side, and then sends back what? An actual encrypted packet. This stuff is encrypted, some of it at least, right? You cannot encrypt everything. Right, you, you still need to send the parameters in plain text, but the rest of the stuff that has the version and stuff that can be encrypted, you can encrypt it. Why? Because the server has the key now. It just it got the half, the half of the key from the client side and the other half from the server, and now it has the full key. Now the client have the key, right? Just like that, acknowledge it obviously, and the server has the key. What do they do? Guess what? They still don't communicate. And this is something I, I, I was really surprised by. It's pretty neat. Let's talk about it. It's called new keys. And this one is also encrypted, right? Because this is the list of around six keys that the client generate to actually make the encryption even stronger just in case if the server have, or the client picked a, a symmetric key algorithm that is not secure, like an AESC uh, CDC, is it called CBC? Yes, yeah, Cypher blockchain, right? Cypher blockchain have been known that it has to be weak. The reason is if a, if a hacker managed to get the Cypher text, something that is inc encrypted already, but they can actually change the cipher text without actually knowing what it is. They can change it so it decrypts to com something completely different, right? So let's say uh, you send ls in the SSH, like which is list, right? And this encrypts into something, right? And the, and the, the hacker can change that to say something to a completely different encryption T that decrypts to pseudo apt <laughs> to pseudo rm dash rf dot that will be disaster right obviously this is a uh, look what an outrageous example so then these new keys are used to actually seed in more complexity in the encryption itself so it becomes you can verify you can authenticate the text you can nobody can actually mess with the cipher text we have this in tls uh already uh, this is a different encryption algorithm. This is not C TLS, obviously. Uh, with the TLS, we have uh, the uh, HMAC and and certain 
signature authentication in the cipher suite that we pick and and that's why that's how we pick plus in TLS 1.3 we don't allow CBC cipher suite I think we allow it but it's it's no I don't think we do TS 1.2 we allow but it, no and the rest of the stuff is just encrypted packets so we can't read any of stuff but look at that we sent one the server responds with an encrypted the client sends and the server responds and then we actually close the connection probably because uh, we waited for a long time so i'm gonna reset this thing and go back to this and let's just kill this and do it again how about that hit we have all that stuff my connection is still open now i'm gonna put my password hit enter Ooh, this is the last packet we sent right new keys da ta 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 and superior retransmission some retransmission happened no problem some window update that's what we've we talked about a bit encrypted packet so we sent this we one two and then we got one and then the server sent me two packets and then we sent and I, just, I didn't send any command. This is just some communication just to establish the connection. The server sent three packets and we're done, right? And all of this stuff is encrypted now. We cannot look at any of it, unfortunately. So I'm going to clear this thing. And now I'm going to send ls, one command. Let's see what this translates to. Holy man. Seriously? That doesn't look right. Seriously? I sent one command and this translates into how many? Client send my command, server responds. And then client send again. Why? It's literally two bytes. And the server respond, and then client, then server respond, then server, server. This I understand. Like, uh, how, what? This is, the, this is my strength back, right? It's, you know, that's not even a lot. I don't understand. Look at that server. Ooh, server keeps sending. That tells me the, 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 the size, the window size is too small. Yeah, the server, look at that. Keeps sending more information. Right? Let's clear this thing and do something else. Let's do, let's do touch. Let's do t touch test. Oh my God. Can you believe this guys? This is just, ah, this is too chatty. I don't know about you guys, but I think this is too chatty. I mean, I didn't build something close to as, as, as complex as, as SSH, but I think this is too chatty. Look at this stuff. This can't be right. I didn't do anything. I literally just did touch. That's a command and should be sent in one packet and goes there and then responds back. Yeah, guys, if, if anyone, unli until Wireshark actually able to decrypt this and I'm going to make another video when they do, they are working on the decryption uh, logic so they can decrypt the traffic with the, with the SSL key log or whatever that thing is called. And then we'll be able to actually look and, and see what are these chatter, chatter, because this is too much, guys, to me. And just, just like, wow, I wouldn't build a protocol that is too chatty, unless there is a reason behind it that we don't know, right? Security reason or something like that, right? They might, they might be, they might, who knows? It, this could be a way to, to, to break, because like SSH, unlike web, it's dangerous, right? You don't want anyone to interfere in the middle and change one packet. If it's predictable, then this might be actually a problem. So this this is why this is might be why they make it so it's unpredictable, right? Yeah, because like this is it. I just need one command and generate what one hundred and thirty. That's not possible. All right, guys. I live. I'll, I think I'll leave it at that today. I'm gonna see you in the next one, guys. What do you think of the of this protocol? SSH obviously is very, very popular. I hope we can look under the curtain and actually decrypt this thing, so we can actually understand what is it doing and learn more about it. I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.